Well, hello, it's Jim at SMR. Today, we're going to wire up one of these. This is an electrical cord switch. And let me briefly tell you a little bit about its components. So this is a little clamping thing, which we clamp down the cable, which is going in and out of the thing. This one is ground, which is basically, um, well, the little security ground function so that it doesn't uh, burn when it gets shortened out in that way. Uh, makes it less dangerous. So this is of course an earthed or a grounded switch. Um, there are ungrounded switches, but uh, if you're doing with grounded switches, you need to make sure that you use a cable with three cables in it. So three conductors. Here, uh, they are, in, in many parts of the world, they are blue, brown, and green, yellow. The green, yellow is uh, ground, uh, the brown is the live, and the blue is the neutral. And this is, of course, because it's alternating current, so it uh, switches, um, it, it comes from the live one, the power, but it switches back and forth between the live and the neutral one, the blue and the brown. 60 or 50 times per uh, second. So in any case, uh, this goes to the ground. This one here, that's not getting uh, any well, connection up difference there. Uh, th th this one on the side, that goes to the neutral, the blue one. And here you can see that we are actually cutting or, con or connecting the current here. Uh, and that is for the brown wire. So the brown wire, the live one, will go here. If you're feeling a little bit tech savvy, we can look inside. And here we can see we have a little um, thing that switches between, on and off, this little metal conductor. And we can actually pick this out if we want to, there is nothing under. So it's a pretty simple operation. Make sure everything works properly. I'm connecting up a lamp cord. So in the other end of these cables, I have, well, empty cables. And of course, make sure that you do not have anything connected in anywhere when you're working with cables like this. That's of course very important and you should probably already know this, but I'm telling you anyways. And also that uh, legality of doing stuff like this yourself differs a little bit between different countries and if you need some kind of certification or not, check that before, before we are not responsible for anything you may might mess up. So in any case, we'll need to gauge approximately how far the, the cables will go. And remember, uh, on the side here, here we have the neutral one, we have them there. So if we kind of gauge them to the mill here, this is approximately how far we'll need to, uh, well, remove the uh, insulation from these cables. And we will also make sure that we need to keep some of the white part here because on this white part or the white part of the insulation we'll need to use that to actually clamp down on the cable here somewhere around there you can do this with a knife or a uh, pair of uh, tweezers like this too um, but you'll need to be a little bit careful so that you don't uh, ac accidentally expose any part of the wires. Uh, this white powder here, that's uh, flame retardation. That's not very healthy, so be a little bit careful about wash your hands afterwards. And the other cable. We're going to remove the clamps here. Now on my cord switch, I can actually take these little uh, leads loose from uh, this area. Uh, so for simplicity, I will connect the blue and the neutral one to these cables uh, before I insert them into the thing. Now we of course need to make sure that they go in all half the way in like that and that not any loose little wire is sticking out on any side. So it's a uh, so it doesn't actually accidentally short out or anything like that. If you have some trouble to get the wires uh, all to be in, in this, if any, any of them kind of stick out a little bit, you can just carefully twist them together a little bit so that none is sticking out. Don't twist them too hard, just twist them enough so that you can insert the whole thing. 
and make sure that the screw is clamping down on the copper and not on the insulation part because that might be a weak um, weak bond kind of uh, so it accidentally gets uh, torn out later so make sure it's onto the copper like that perfect we're now going to connect up the other cable in the other end so the yellow green goes to the yellow green which is of course the ground the ground is not any of the dangerous scary connections the ground is you know the ground is this part here on the plug the blue and the brown one those are the cables to worry about make sure that the screws are sitting tight onto the copper so that they don't uh, try to escape later that would be really bad now it looks like we have a little bit too tight cables here you can see they're pretty precise you really don't want to make them too long either because that might cause some issues and can cause it so that when you drag in the cable tug it like that and they kind of get torn out and um, you are accidentally um, exposing copper and stuff like that so you want to make sure that they are not longer than they have to be but if you need like an extra half centimeter what you can do is you can carefully cut between two of the cables and cut a little bit from the inside. Make sure you don't damage any of the internal cables though. And then you can kind of use this to peel out an extra half a centimeter of the brown one, for example, to actually get uh, the connection into the uh, switch part there for the live wire. But that's only if you have to. So we can insert it here into the switch and put all of these little connections at the right spot. Yep, they seem to be fitting there perfectly well and they are just about right. So now we can indeed <laughs> connect the brown cables. So it's a little bit cramped space to work with this kind of thing, but as long as we kind of uh, get them in the right order and the right length, it's usually no problem. There is uh, usually more problem if you accidentally make them too uh, long, the wires. So let's see here, the live wire lastly. Get the, the careful little twist. Get it inserted there. Screw down the screw onto the copper. And on the other side. Make sure it really goes in there. And also make sure that no loose little copper wire gets anywhere else. That might increase the chance of anything shorting out in the future, which is really bad. Make sure it's tight like that. This one too. We can control all the, all the screws and see that they are indeed tight. And then we can sort them up and push them down into the different little sockets where they go. Like we can see here, we might need to push the different cables aside a little bit so it's tight and nice like this. Make sure that these are indeed secured down in their places like that so it's looking nice and tight like this. And these need to sit and clamp down on the white part of the cable, of course, otherwise they will not get a good enough grip. Make sure they are tight and nice. And you can go over and test the screws you're drawn in to make sure that they are actually sitting pretty tightly. Because this is, this is the last chance to do that. Now everything is looking pretty tidy and nice, don't you think? So, we can finally cover this thing up. There we go. And a little test. Seems to be working very fine. Cord cable complete. Anyways, if you enjoyed this little video, please subscribe for more. This is your host, Jimo Desen, and I'm signing out. Bye bye.